Once upon a time, there was a little game called Cook, Serve, Delicious. In it, you ran a restaurant in Sherry Soda Tower, and with hard work and skill, you built it up from a greasy spoon diner to a world-class restaurant. It was a great game. Then came Cook, Serve, Delicious 2. You lost your restaurant in Sherry Soda Tower due to corrupt management, but you got a new one in the fabulous Tarragon Super Tower and started again. Through a combination of running your own restaurant and working shifts in other restaurants in the tower, you built your business and your reputation back up to world-famous levels. But in the background of this story, another story was building. In the food descriptions and emails, if you were paying attention, you would notice that the world outside wasn't quite what you might have imagined. While you hide away in your ivory tower cooking gourmet foods and taking out the trash, the world outside is in shambles. The United States is a war-torn mess, and you're running your restaurant in one of the few safe, secure places left. None of this affects the gameplay, however, and you can go the whole game without ever even realizing it. It's all just a funny, quirky backstory. Enter Cook, Serve, Delicious 3. This game begins with you losing your restaurant again, but this time, it's not bad management that puts you out of business. And as for Cook, Serve, Delicious? Well, it continues to be regarded as the finest restaurant in the world. Until it was destroyed 20 minutes ago. The war has come to Tarragon Super Tower, and this time you're lucky to escape with your life. But the androids who rescue you from the rubble recognize you as the world-famous chef, and they give you a food truck so that you can keep making top-notch cuisine for the people. And this time, the setting does affect the gameplay. You can't hide away in your tower anymore. Players of CSD2 will find the gameplay of 3 pretty familiar overall. You prepare dishes, many of them carried over from the previous game, so you won't have to relearn everything from scratch, and serve them to impatient customers before they get fed up with waiting and leave. You also still have holding stations where you can prepare food in advance, and although these have been moved to the function keys rather than the tab plus number keys from the previous game, it doesn't take long to get used to the change, and you can rebind the controls if you prefer. In fact, the developer has done a great job of considering accessibility in general. There are several different ways to rebind keys, as well as customize colors, turn visual effects on and off, and more. There's also the option to play each level in chill mode, which means the customers will have infinite patience, though you can only get up to a silver medal in this mode. But the style of gameplay has changed quite a bit. Instead of a steady stream of customers throughout the day with two hectic rush hours, now you're going from stop to stop on your food truck. You need to prepare special orders and fill holding stations between stops, and when you arrive, you need to serve everything fast. There are no side dishes to increase patience in your food truck patrons, so speed is more critical than ever to serving all the meals perfectly and getting that precious gold medal. Not everything is more difficult, though. You now have a pair of Android assistants who can help you serve the food. One of my favorite additions to this game is a button you can press to serve all meals that are ready. It saves you from having to accurately hit the number keys, one of my biggest sources of errors in the past, and it lets you focus on the cooking. It's also super satisfying to see them all go out at once. There are also no more chores. Presumably the androids take care of that. So all you have to do is focus on making that food. Quickly. And perfectly. No pressure. One thing this game does really well is give you control over your experience while also pushing you to try new things as you play. There are upgrades you can make to the truck, including more prep and holding stations, but you don't have to unlock them until you're ready. Then, for each level, you build your own menu by choosing foods from a list of possibilities. But the list for each route is different, so you can't just make the same familiar foods every time. For many of the routes, you can basically set your own difficulty level, taking easy or difficult menu options, each clearly identified with a number and a color scheme. You are rewarded with more money at the end of the level for taking more difficult foods, but there's no penalty for taking it easy. For other routes, there is a minimum point value required, so you are forced to try some of the more difficult options in order to play the level. It's the perfect balance between the total freedom and control of CSD1 and the themed menus and escalating difficulty of CSD2. Also, sometimes people shoot at you. 
Okay, it doesn't actually happen that often, and the levels where it does happen are clearly labeled, but you're not the only food truck out there trying to make a living. In some levels, a rival food truck will attack you between stops while you're trying to prepare the next batch of orders, potentially destroying a holding station and making the rest of the level much more difficult. The androids deal with returning fire and chasing off your attacker while you keep focusing on the food, but it is certainly distracting, and trying to work with fewer stations can really ramp up the difficulty level. Why can't we all just get along? Gameplay aside, the game developers have really outdone themselves this time when it comes to the writing, the visuals, and the music. Through your food truck window, you can see the devastated landscape of the US. All the new foods are just as beautiful as the old ones, and even the menus are gorgeous. The food descriptions are still hilarious and fascinating. And the music. Oh, man. The music is just... It's just so good. When I did a live stream of this game, there were many points where I just took a break between levels so the audience and I could enjoy the menu music. How often does that happen in a game? When I first tried Cook, Serve, Delicious 2 way back in September 2017, I had mixed feelings. It was very different from the first game, and I needed time to adjust. But Cook, Serve, Delicious 3 has already blown me away. It's familiar yet fresh, hectic yet relaxing, beautiful yet challenging and thought-provoking. It's both easier and more difficult than the previous games, and it's not even finished yet. The game releases into early access on January 29th, but even more will be added to it before it's complete. To the entire team working on the game at Vertigo Gaming, amazing work. You've really outdone yourselves with this one. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an Iron Chef competition in Nashville to get to and win. See y'all next time.